A. like ourselves. Oh, Lord have mercy. What should we do? I tell you what, all of this confusion about who's in charge of the, uh, of the evil eye, you don't need to be in charge of the evil eye and you don't need to be worrying about who's in charge of it. You need to have the loving eye. <laughs> we, 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 we need to be able to take our, our uh, inconveniences and understand how to make conveniences out of them. I, I, I say all of this, be, I say that because there's a other side to everything. I know misery is here, but and I know evil is here, and I know misconceptions are here, and I know there's people that don't want it. But if that's not you, what does that mean to you? If you want things to be better, if you're willing to invest your heart and soul into making this world a better place, and why should you do that? Well, I mean, do you want it to rain 40 days and 60 nights? Do you want hurricanes? Do you want earthquakes, nine-point earthquakes? Well, those things are happening. So what? That means you have the alternative. You have the ability to express your humility and love for each other because you know, truth, truth be, you're listening to me this Sunday and everything go right and God willing, I'll be here next Sunday. But that's not guaranteed. So I'm going to do my best today. I'm going to do my best today to make you understand that I care about you and I care that you care about me. And if we care about that, we should be willing to make a few sacrifices to care about this planet we live on. It's not easy. It's not easy because there's so many false signals in front of us. There's, there's false signals that make you feel that you're not worth it. There's false signals that make you say, ah, oh, man, tomorrow ain't going to be. Oh, today is here. Those are false signals. Turn the page just a little bit and you'll see another angle and you'll realize that, whoa, this is a pretty good day. Why? Because I'm here. And if I'm here, that means I can do a few things that might make it better for me tomorrow, make it better for you tomorrow, make the world. You know, when that takes place, that's what we mean when we say make the world a better place. It allows you to seek the positive side of yourself so that you can move forward to help. And that's, that, that's what it's about. Because if you don't feel positive about yourself, if you don't feel positive about your, posit about your possibilities, then you start suicide. We're going to talk about suicide because there are people who have not been touched enough by their family, you, the possibilities of the future. They have been touched by that enough to, to, to buy into it. They're buying into the, I'm not worth it, or... I'm causing too much trouble. Or the world's just, I, I mean, I've never committed suicide. I don't know what it all is about, but I have friends who left through that door. And I'll tell you, if I had known the day before that they were intending to or thinking about it, I could have said something different. I don't know what I said the day before that, wasn't strong enough to help them see that, oh, man, there is a reason to keep on ticking. We all have that opportunity to, to be enthused about our lives and enthusiastic to other people about their contributions. You know, their contributions. Well, what does that mean? That means, Eric, you're doing a good job, my brother. I appreciate that. Okay, and he does a good job every Sunday. I don't know every Sunday say, Eric, you're doing a good job, but I should. You know, he says hey, it's all right. You know, but but my point is that you get a compliment, it kind of makes you feel like you should be here. 
It makes you feel like, well, maybe it ain't so bad. And so that might be the first thing that you can do as you get on your venture of trying to make yourself understand how valuable you are. Be valuable to someone else and watch them smile at you. How you doing? Man, you look good today. Oh, man, I was thinking about you all day. I have been so excited this evening, this morning. Couldn't sleep last night thinking about my friend Glenn Towery. Glenn Towery is a young man that uh, we attended San Jose State at the same time. We were fooling around. I was fooling around with the world of theater. He was not. He's, uh, he's been active and successful in it. Um, I guess I've been okay in theater because <laughs> I've taken my theater to the streets and uh, I sell things. Um, and I'm going to try to sell you on being the good guy, the guy that understands who you are, the power that you have to make this world a better place. We're going to take this short break. And then when I come back, I want to introduce you to Mr. Glenn Towery. He is a Vietnam veteran. He's an actor. He's, an, he's a producer. Uh, he's a musician. He's an artist. And he is the founder of the Veteran Suicide Prevention Channel and the Austin Veterans Arts Fest. Busy young man. And he does all of this because he cares about other people. Glenn, how's this work for you? I don't know, but the way it helps other people. <laughs> Love that guy. We'll be right back. You'll get a chance to meet a true hero walking on two feet. It's a good deal. Publish your legal notice in West Side Story newspaper. For the best service and the best rates, call 909-384-8131. Publishing legal notices in the city and county of San Bernardino since 1990. West Side Story provides friendly expert service. Call 909-384-8131 to benefit from budget-friendly rates. Whether a fictitious business name, a name change, a divorce summons, or any other legal or public notice, call West Side Story newspaper, 909-384-8131. 909-384-8131. That's 909-384-8131. All right, this is Empire Talks Back. I'm Wallace Allen here on the case for truth and justice with the right information to help improve the situation. And if you've got a Volvo automobile and you want to improve that old Volvo, and I'm talking about not brand new Volvos, I'm talking about them up to maybe year 210, 2000, 211. Uh, but those are good cars. They run a Volvo, give you a half million miles if you give it a little bit of smile and, and take care of it. So go see the Volvo doctor. That's my friend Tom. Gosh, do I have Tom's phone number? I'll give it to you later on. Tell you what, though. Look up All Make. That's A-L-L-M-A-K-E, All Make Auto. That's on baseline here in the city of Highland, and it's worth the drive. Tom is the Volvo doctor at All Make Auto. I'll give the phone number a little bit later. Eh, maybe you don't have a Volvo. Too bad for you. Unless it's a brand new one. If it's an old one and you need a little help, you better call Tom. This is Empire Talks Back. I'm Wallace Allen. I'm glad to be with you. I'm glad to be able to introduce my friend, Mr. Glenn Towery, the gentleman who is uh, lucky enough to have married Juanita, who is also an artist in his back pocket, holding him straight up without a doubt. Glenn, how are you this morning? I'm doing very, very well this morning. I'm, you know, already you play so much joy and you brought back some memories when you talked about us going to San Jose State together. I just want to say for your audience that this young man was legend before I met him. I had heard his legend before I even met him. And, but the legend was really about his poetry and his style and quality of person. And uh, so when I finally did get a chance to meet you guys know him as Wallace, but but everybody called him Wally, <laughs> mm, mm. and that was with a lot of respect and affection. And all of those people who knew him then and who still know him now, we we still have that that love and affection for Wally because he's a real people person. Man, I appreciate that. My mother really appreciates that. I was I hope she was listening. Because uh, <laughs> that's the kind of stuff that makes a mama proud, you know. And oh, Glenn, yeah. And Glenn, and I bet you your folks have got to be real proud of you in that 
you know, you use your life experience to to do things and do things and do things. But Glenn, everything that I've seen you do pretty much is for somebody else. You're very unselfish. You're very uh, concerned about other people, concerned about the world. And, you know, and then you've married somebody that feels the same way. And you guys are producing art. You're doing things there in Austin, Texas that uh, benefit more than just yourselves. And I appreciate you both extremely for that part of it. Glenn, yeah, you have your Veteran Suicide Prevention Channel. We have uh, issues here on the planet uh, that, you know, our mental health, our, our, our response to what goes on around us is, is it, it, can, it can just be anything and everything. But we have some people who are so sensitive to what's going on that maybe their self-esteem. I, I don't know what it, what it is, Glenn, but I know that you have spent time uh, working to prevent it. I know that means you've had to spend time learning more about the reasons for it. Uh, and it's particularly, oh, I guess, uh, heinous when we see it with our veterans, people who have gone off to protect what we have and to allow us to project what we want as a people, as a country. Uh, these are very valuable people that have been used as tools for for our society. And I don't say that in a negative way, but except in terms of when I see a good mechanic, you know, he takes his tools, he oils them up, and he puts them away, and he takes care of them. Our veterans, who are tools for the advancement of our society, seem to be thrown over in the corner and left alone to rust and figure out how to fix something by themselves. Uh, now, there's a positive side to that because that means that folks who are interested in helping, there is a, there's a whole corner of stuff sitting over there just waiting to be polished up, just yeah. waiting for somebody to come in and say, hey, what's going on? Can we do something to make this thing better? Ooh-wee. Mm. Now, that's where we, you know, so I don't want to... I don't want to make it as sorrowful as it is just discussing the veterans and their demise because of our social lack of our lack of social responsibility for them. But to bring out the possibilities of what people could do to make their life better if they just reached out and got hooked up with a veteran to help make his and her life better. Yeah, that's a that's a powerful thing, Molly. Uh, reach out, that word that you just said, is one of the major, major keys because we miss the signs of suicide so often uh, that it's just, you know, after it happens, we go back and wow. Mm -hmm. and we, we replay in our mind mm -hmm. what the person said, what the person did. They're like key things to, to look for. When you find a person that's giving away the precious things in their lives to people that they care about. They're just giving it away, and you don't know why. You know that this is something that's important. That's a sign that this person is, may be in trouble, that this person may be thinking that, I won't need this tomorrow because I won't be here to use it. Wait a minute. You mean, um, I could, you mean I could be so selfish that my friend comes up to me and says, hey, man, you've been riding in my car all this time, and here's the key. I'm going to give you the car. I'm going to be happy and say, oh, wow, and I'm going to drive off in that Corvette as happy as I could be. Or shouldn't I say, whoa, what do you mean you're going to give me your car? Mm. Now, yeah. put me in that scenario and let's see what I say. I don't know. I remember when uh, one of our friends in uh, San Jose, he, he got him a new vet, gave me the keys to the old one. Now, the last thing I thought about, and I still today, till you said that, didn't think at all that this young man was thinking about you know, suicide. Maybe it was because he had already replaced his car. I don't know. But I do understand that if you are the recipients of something very valuable from someone that you value, you know how much they valued it. Are you really so... Uh, hung up on yourself that you really think that you're worth 
that person's dream? You better ask him what's wrong. I would think. I I, I don't know, but let's 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 explore that a little bit. What other well, because, kind of, you know, ahead. a lot of people they they don't go there because they're not in that space mentally and emotionally. So they they just automatically, and that's kind of hard for you to think in a way, if you especially if you're not kind of trained or knowledgeable, that somebody's giving you something that you should ask them why. That you should just say to them, are you okay? You know, um, because they put you in a space of you're of receiving. So a lot of times people, they don't even, they don't even really think about that. And it's not really that they're bad people. No. It's just that the normal thing is to feel happy when somebody gives you something. But now if you, once you're educated, you know, you should always ask somebody, why are you giving me this thing that's so precious to you? Glenn, if if if, if they were trying to give you their garbage can full of garbage, <laughs> right? You know, yeah. so so let's not pretend we don't look gift horses in the mouth. We okay. look them in the mouth, in the ear, in the rectum, everywhere. We, I mean, that's what we do. So when you point out, as many experts have, that one of the signs of suicide is for people who is that people start giving away their things to the people that they love. And yeah. they then and they don't explain necessarily why, and to respond to that gift uh, by looking the horse gift horse in the mouth and saying uh, that's great I appreciate it, but are you all right? Why are you doing this? I mean, why are you giving me your ring? You wear that mm. ring all the time. I've seen you wear it all the time. We are not getting married. We're not lovers. We're not. Why are you giving me your ring? Mm. But we have to be able to ask that question and be a little cynical and, and at the same time respect the fact that there should be some love between us. If they want to give you something that you should have enough love that you should be able to have that conversation or a deeper conversation. Um, you know what I worry about, Wally? Please. Wally? When people, usually the people that are killing themselves are the most sensitive people on the planet. Even if they seem to have a, a rough veneer, they're sensitive. That's I, and I, I'd agree with I that. I think about it this way sometimes. I say every time one of these people commits suicide or dies, we lose a little more humanity. We lose this sensitive part of, of ourselves if we think of ourselves holistically as, as a, a culture, as a civilization, as a consciousness we lose that when we begin to lose so many of these people we dilute that sensitivity begins to become diluted in our society and it has a, an effect on everything right and i would think that the sensitivity you know if we let people know how much we care how much they mean to us that sensitivity would probably deny them the satisfaction or the route of suicide. Glenn, we're going to take a break. When we come back, I would like to lean on your expertise and let's see what other things we can do to be helpful. Uh, and is there anything that would be beneficial to having more veterans get involved in helping other veterans prevent suicide? Is that a good place to put our, our efforts to try to be sure that uh, potential victims become potential saviors? Mm -hmm. Take this yeah. break. We'll be right back. We're talking with Mr. Glenn Towery, uh, the founder of the Veteran Suicide Prevention Channel and of the Austin Veterans Art Festival. And we want to talk about that too. But uh, we'll be right back and get a little bit more from Glenn. A long way to go, where we'll end up. Publish your legal notice in West Side Story newspaper. For the best service and the best rates, call 909-384-8131. Publishing legal notices in the city and county of San Bernardino since 1990. West Side Story provides friendly expert service. Call 909-384-8131 to benefit from budget-friendly rates. Whether a fictitious business name, a name change, a divorce summons, or any other legal or public notice, call West Side Story newspaper, 909-384-8131. 909-384-8131. That's 909-384-8131.
All right, we're back. This is Empire Talks. Back on Wallace Allen on the case for truth, justice, with the right information to help improve the situation. We are speaking with Mr. Glenn Towery. He is uh, the founder of the Veterans Suicide Prevention Channel. Uh, and Glenn, what are some of the things we can do to help veterans look the other way and decide not to uh, run out that suicide door? Well, you mentioned the Austin Veterans Arts Festival, and art, art is a big, a very big thing for veterans to practice. Um, what we discovered, and it's been known for many, many years, art itself is a form of meditation. Hmm. So you, when you practice art, you give your conscious mind, or the things that have been bothering you, you give them rest. You kind of like the mind sets it aside while you concentrate on this thing that you're doing, this artistic thing, mm. which has a lot of components to it in terms of meditative quality. There's enjoyment in it. There's creativity in it. There's thoughtfulness in it, but not about the things that are bothering you. So while you're in that process of practicing this art and whatever it is that's bothering you is set aside, because it's not on a conscious level while you're practicing the art, the mind has a chance to deal with it without the consequences of the pain, hmm. without the feeling of the pain on such a conscious level. And many people who do art uh, that are experiencing art in that way, that are having mental and emotional issues, you know, you can really see after they get through doing a painting or doing a sculpture or writing a poem or doing some rap or writing some music, it represents in the art. It's there. And people, when you deal with your problems in that manner, you take the sting out of them and you begin to be able to understand in a different type of way what is bothering. And that is not so... That is not so bad for you to take your life. That is not really bad at all because you can deal with it and process it through using the art. So we're not talking about someone being an accomplished 50-year uh, all-my-life artist who's taken uh, classes or, you know, for, for music or painting or acting. <clears throat> we're talking about unleashing just the creative side of self and, uh, and 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 maybe seeing something that you didn't know you had. Um, does this, do you think, affect our self-esteem, our worthiness, our ability to see that we not only can create a gift, that maybe we are a gift? Is that, uh, is that moving in that direction? We're going to have, yeah, we're, we're going to have a, a, a Jonathan Buffon, uh, join us shortly he's a okay. mental health uh, technician here in the county of san bernardino and we'll ask him some of those particular Wonderful. questions but what, what what have been some of the results of your actions would say for instance the uh the arts festival uh do we do do we show veterans at that point how to participate in art or are they bringing their uh art pieces to the festival for display. What, what is the arts festival? How, how has that been? What is it, uh, the effects so, of it been? So our arts festival operates, uh, or not, you know, usually when you think of art, you think about painters, sculptors, doodlers, you know, people like that. I, I, and I'm going to answer your question, but I just want to go back and answer the first part of your question. You know, you don't have to be a professional to create some of the most profound art in the world. You really do not. Art itself, uh, for instance, there's a thing called Zentangle, Z-E-N-T-A-N-G-L-E. Zentangle itself was derived from a form of art that we call doodling. You know, you're just sitting down, you got a piece of paper, there's something on your mind, you might be talking to someone, having a cup of coffee, you got a pencil or a pen, and you just doodle something out. You just you just free something coming coming out on the paper. Okay. Well, to us, it's just a, a bunch of lines, maybe squiggly lines or something that looks like. But unless it was something that Jimi Hendrix doodled. 
<laughs> We're gonna have to have that conversation because I miss Jimmy Hendrix when you when he came to your house. That's the one thing I always lament still Ooh, today we. in life. I miss Jimmy Hendrix. But the but value yeah, I hope the value of the doodle is <laughs> you know, depends on, you know, who's doing the doodling. But that's that's from a, a very uh, external viewpoint. From the internal viewpoint, the doodler is really benefiting as he rolls that, just lets the arm go and he does what he does. But you were telling us that doodling has advanced to another level. Uh, but I just wanted to point out that at the doodle level, there's an artistic value that has nothing to do with the artist. Jimi Hendrix was a guitar player. He was a, singer, a songwriter. He had nothing to do with pen and ink and drawing stuff. But his doodle would probably be worth a million bucks because of people like me who don't have the money but would pretend that I did to value that doodle. But people but who are not at that level, when they doodle, there's another something taking place that is just as valuable and not financially valuable necessarily, but the the self-esteem, the ego flow that takes place there. I, I'm, uh, I heard you talking about crayon, putting crayon and paper in front of a veteran and how that in itself, whether he's ever done anything before, but if he participates at that level, he's going to create a piece of art. Yeah. And that art for that veteran is going to mean something to him that it won't mean to anyone else. It may mean the same thing to some other people, but there's a personal a tie to that art, and that's therapeutic. It's therapeutic in the sense that the veteran created it through the process of discovery, through meditation, through practicing the art. And it's also therapeutic in the sense that now it's there for him or her to look at and evaluate. And he did it. And it wasn't yeah. uh, just a dream. He did it. He and, uh, did. Or she did it. Or Either she one. did it. <laughs> right. In for 2013, and, and you know, we admitted women into combat officially in 2013, although women had been dying in wars for for many, many years. You know, and, uh, uh, I think so in some terms more bravely than men because they didn't, they were given weapons, <laughs> mm. you know, but they were in the mass units. They were in the hospitals helping the wounded. They were in supply. They were doing a lot of different things. And so, um, it's nice that uh, they finally have been recognized. But I love what you were saying about peace. I'm a veteran. I'm a Vietnam combat veteran. And I do have, I suffer with PTSD. And I mitigate it most of the time by the use of art. And that's why I created the Austin Veterans Arts Festival. And we've seen some tremendous, uh, some tremendous results from getting veterans to practice art now. Um, they are... Uh, they combine it with other types of therapies, but art therapy is becoming huge right now. It's becoming a very big, big thing, and our festival is um, is like considered like one of the one of the tip of the spears. And our 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 festival travels well, uh, Wallace. So I'm, I'm hopeful that somebody in San Bernardino will say we're going to do an art festival for veterans out here. Mm, and this might be the every, proper time to introduce Jonathan Buffon. Sure. <clears throat> Jonathan. Yes, sir. God bless you, son. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm enjoying the conversation. No, oh, very good. I don't know how much of it you heard, uh, but the more the better. But, you know, we're, we're at the point where Glenn is trying to uh, get you to do a festival. Or, no, I don't know if he's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I cut across the mud pretty quick, you know. <laughs> Jonathan, you, are, you, you work with the County of San Bernardino in mental health. You're becoming a regular here, and I, I really appreciate that. And I think our audience does, too. Jonathan, with uh, Glenn has the suicide, Veterans Suicide Prevention Channel and an mm -hmm. arts festival that is designed to give veterans more of a, a viewpoint and, and uh, more of a place to contribute and a place for people to see their worthiness uh, as if we didn't know that from the fact that they went off and saved her but uh, fighting in a war. 
uh, suicide with veterans kind of, you know, I, I know mental health, that's a big issue for us. I know that uh -huh. we have suicide. It's a big issue for us. We know that gun violence is a big issue for us. But it became a bigger issue for me when I found that gun deaths, suicides are more prevalent than homicides. People using guns to take their own lives take more lives than when people take someone else's life, commit murder. Uh, so as we talk about getting rid of guns, uh, that m doesn't seem to be just the answer. We've got to figure out how to do something. I think if we were able to take the suicide victim and do something to make them, f uh, I don't know, prevent it, you know, suicide period. I don't know. I, I'm, that's why I've got you guys on the line. I, I'm going to get quiet here because why do they do it and what can we do to prevent it and why aren't we doing more of that? That's a great question. And number one, I want to make sure that we all understand that a lot of us, a lot of us, when I say us, me, you, our family members, at some point in our lives, consider ending our lives at some point. For, and it may not be an extended period of time. It could be a situational thing. I'm going through a divorce and things are just falling apart, or I just lost my girlfriend, who I thought was going to be the love of my life, and all of a sudden, I need to start thinking about some terminal stuff because I can't live without her. Mm. Now, these things might seem trivial to us, and like, oh, this is just life. But we are dealing in an age where individuals have access to um, tools and, and, and things that can end their life, and they feel like that decision is just a little bit easier than maybe in previous decades. Mm. I really appreciate the conversation that you're having with this gentleman about um, art therapy uh, because we have found in our county. So I am over the subcommittee for our veterans awareness here for the county. And that art therapy has been helpful. The equine therapy, dealing with horses has been helpful. Uh, dealing with writing, writing books has also been healthy, helpful for a lot of our veterans. So I just wanted to throw that in there. But going back to our suicide issue is we've got to be able to identify individuals that are going through pain and being able to really not only check in, but to stay with them for a specific amount of time until they get to the point where they see life as the option. Hmm. Some of that it requires training of us as family members and coworkers to know what the signs are where individuals are contemplating that suicide is an option. That's what I would start with. What are some of those signs? We did discuss uh, earlier uh... – you know, if, if if you were to come give me your keys to your car, I I should not just jump in the car and drive to uh, Chicago. I should uh, say, hey, what's going on? Which, you know, why are you giving me the car? Uh, and yeah. and check yeah. into the, check into that circumstance. People giving away their precious items to people they love at a point in their life where they're not, you know, they're not expected to die. They're not 80, 90 years old. They're, 35, 40, walking around and maybe not walking as straight as they used to. What are some other, the, some other signals? How can we recognize? What kind of training do you give to help people recognize a potential suicide victim? Very good question. And, and, and some of us think it's some complicated psychotherapy types of questions, but it's not. Oftentimes when you meet one of your coworkers, your friends, your social, the people that you saw in your social network, and you ask them how they're doing, and they say a word like, uh, it's been tough, you know, or I'm just trying to make it through. And we leave them at that and not go into what's going on and asking more probing questions as far as are there some very specific life experiences that you're going through now that you need support? We have to become better at really understanding how to be uncomfortable with our friends when they're not necessarily at their highest point and asking, tell me more about your, what you're going through so that you can identify if there is something that they have in their mindset that they can't overcome by themselves. So that's one. You brought up uh, giving away items and things that, that they have considered to be like prized possessions. Other things could be in some of their, a lot of people are expressing themselves in social media 
in ways they would never tell people when they see them face to face. Mm. Watching social media, especially for our younger people, they might be showing some pictures or writing some messages that you might have questions on. Be very specific. Message them, call them, text them. Find out is there something deeper to that dark song that you posted a couple of weeks ago or a couple of days ago. Boy, our, our 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 social technology and social engineering is almost 180 degrees from that. We are not talking to each other. We talk around each other. We sit at the same table. Our noses are in the phone or in the computer. Uh, we have so many ways to feel uh, unobserved, uncared for, uh, and we project that onto other people simply by following the little social technical rules or technical games that we have. We, you know, we, we're pushed away from talking to each other. Uh, what are you all up in my business asking me all that for? That may be the response. You know, and if that's the response, I could feel kind of happy. You know, <laughs> hey, man, what's wrong with you? Blah, blah, blah. Are, are things okay? Well, Wallace, why are you asking me all that old crazy stuff, man? Blah, blah, blah. You owe me some money. Give me my money. Okay, cool. Let's <laughs> but, but that's it, it seems to be a little more nefarious than that. Uh, you know, are, one, of, one of the big things, uh, Wallace, is isolation. When you see a person begin yeah. to isolate, or, or that's a big sign right there. Hey, the COVID um, made all of us isolate. Yeah, but it's a different kind of isolation. It's it's uh, it's uh, it's derived really basically mainly from depression, which is another big sign. If a person tells you that they're depressed, if a person tells you that they are stressed, and if you see if their personality, if you know them, and their personality has changed, they're more isolated. That's an indication that they may be. Uh, we know they're having problems, but you, but we need to talk to them. You know, isolation, when people isolate, that's a very bad thing uh, because they once they start communicating with others, that means they're having deep conversation with themselves. Jonathan, you have meetings constantly, and mm-hmm. you're African-American, mental health awareness, blah, blah, mm-hmm. and you used to meet in person. I know the yeah. West Side Action Group we used to meet in person. I don't know. Are you fellows? Are you guys meeting in person? We, when we get a chance, but you want to know, a lot of it is done through our our phones. So isolation, social- isolation yeah. has become a a a social trait that uh, does not necessarily carry a negative connotation. So, what 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 do we do? Okay, I yeah. I, I know that if we were attending the meetings. People would look up and say, hey, so-and-so is not here. You know, somebody give them a call. But when we're doing virtual meetings, something that's even easier supposedly to do, and we don't have the volume, you know, if, if live we're able to get 15, 20 members, then on the phone we ought to be able to get, you know, maybe 80% of the members, maybe 40 or 50 people. But we don't. So mm-hmm. so are we recognizing people as being isolated or just not interested or we didn't put on a good enough performance? Where no, are we really? where are we left with that and what can we do to oh not look around and have a call meeting because one of our you know main people is somebody most loved and highly respected committed suicide. And maybe it was because we looked up and we said, well, you know, they haven't been at any of the meetings lately, but we haven't had any meetings. Well, they haven't been at any virtual meetings. How do, are yeah. we, what are we going to do with that? Oh, how, do we, no, how do we deal with that? Really good question. But what I would also recommend is in all virtual meetings that you start off with some kind of check-in and that you have to purposely put a part of your session where you folks have to kind of report on just how they're doing and add that to your time because you're right we don't get that um i really like that idea of, um because isolation is a definitely telltale sign but also breaks in habits when you know an individual's been going to church every sunday they stop going to church individuals are breaking their normal routines we got to ask those questions of is there something a reason why and how can I help you if there's somebody that needs help? And understanding how routines become routine. I may go to church every Sunday for six years, but if I miss church for four Sundays in a row, that all of a sudden becomes a routine. Oh, mm-hmm. you're going to be too late for that, Aunt. Um, 
set it up. Hey, we may have some music during the last half of the show. Anthony, the mood master just showed up. <laughs> Anthony, what's your birth sign? Aquarius. It ain't your birthday, so I don't know why you're late, but it's okay. I'm glad to hear you. I hope you let me. I'm gonna leave you alone so you can set up because this guy has the the greatest little bass quality in the world. I, who? That's why we call him the Mood Master. But but uh, Jonathan, we're gonna take this short break. But when we come back, let's follow up on how we check up on each other. What can we do that is going to not be uh, overriding or you know be, be troublesome, but how can we check on each other and can we do it in an organized way and how can that help prevent this terrible announcement of one of our friends committing suicide? We'll be right back. This is Empire Talks Back. I'm Wallace Allen. You're you and we are all going to be better after the end of this conversation. There's been so many things that held us down. Publish your legal notice in West Side Story newspaper. For the best service and the best rates, call 909-384-8131. Publishing legal notices in the city and county of San Bernardino since 1990. West Side Story provides friendly expert service. Call 909-384-8131 to benefit from budget-friendly rates. Whether a fictitious business name, a name change, a divorce summons, or any other legal or public notice, call West Side Story newspaper, 909-384-8131. 909-384-8131. That's 909-384-8131. Ruben. All right, guys, we're back. This is Empire Talks Back. I told you I was going to tell you how to get in touch with the Volvo doctor, Mr. Tom. Head phone number is 909-425-8200. 425-8200, 909 area code. Get your Volvo, talk, take the, wow, give it a physical. Get it checked out. He'll do all of the little engine work. He'll make it run like it's brand new. I can promise you that. He's done that for me with two or three Volvos. All right, this is Empire Talks Back. We are talking to Jonathan Buthong. Buffon. We're talking to Glenn Towery. Jonathan is a health care, mental health care uh, worker here in the county of San Bernardino. Jonathan, what is your exact title? I'm a mental health education consultant. Education consultant. Very good. And uh, Glenn Towery, his main title is... Husband of one Nita. How's your wife doing, man? <laughs> How's her art? Her art is fabulous, man. I, you know, I, that's how I got into art. <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's it's hard to be around an artist and not be an artist. Uh, Glenn, you were you you've been a a social artist uh, ever since I've known you. You were. Where does this guy come from? He know everybody. Everybody like him all of a sudden. Where you been? Where you been? And uh, we we appreciate that about you. Uh, but the fact that you care about other people has, has has become, you know, the spotlight that you seem to always be under. Uh, we're at a point now where we have the ability to be sad about people who are not being able to make it in life the way they could or should. Or we can be enthused about our ability to interface with them, to help bring them into a, a light of life that will make them better at what they're doing and better for all of us as a result of that. Uh, how do we get more people involved in making others whole? I guess that's, that's the point in the question. Uh, Jonathan, uh, what do you suggest that we do? What's available to us as a healthcare, mental health care educator? Give us an idea of what we can do to be more responsible to our... Absolutely. So I want to stay on this topic of how to check in with people. Good. All right. So there's four basic areas that you, and I'm going to go real quick. One of them is just, and, and, and uh, I think Glenn brought it up, is uh, the question. But anxiety is the other part of it. And the question you want to know is what's been worrying you lately, whether it's your family member or yourself, doing a mental check-in check for yourself. What has been worrying you lately? 
the, the second one would be, am I taking care of my body's basic needs? Is my son, my daughter, my husband, my wife handling those basic needs? Because there's often times where sometimes something is a priority and we forget we got to sleep. we got to make sure we're eating. we got to make sure those basic stuff are covered. The third one is, what are I doing for fun? What have I done in the last week that has been enjoyable for me, that has been a stress relief, that has been a hobby, and has something that has taken my mind off of the daily work grind or the daily grind with my ailing parents or whatever it is you're going through? And then the final thing is, who is in my corner? Can I consistent? Can I honestly say I have someone who has my back and who I can talk to and who can champion whatever I'm feeling and let me a sounding board. Those questions are what you want to make sure that you are engaging whoever it is that you're with. And when you start going into a deeper level, when someone is feeling any kind of pain, and if there are any red alerts, you need to connect them to a professional. And a professional could be like the Department of Behavioral Health. It could be a 1-800 crisis line where you just do 1-800 suicide. And then there are also apps that you can go to that can also support folks and give them the resources that they need. You know, I think there's a, a definitely an asset to know how to recognize that weakness in people. Uh, but I think there is a uh, attitude that we can take that even if we don't know those specific methods, we can be helpful to people in general. And that's yeah. that's by, I mean, being sincere when you ask somebody how you doing, and not just hey how you doing and keeping on down the road, but how are you doing, and 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 know enough about them to really ask that question and don't be faking. And people that you know, it's like today. Today is Sunday. You get you know there, there's a little low. Uh, hopefully today I can convince people to go to their phone. And just call, you know, I know there's that person, you don't want to call, because they, man, it's going to be an hour conversation. I don't, well, listen, you don't have to do that. You can call and say, hey, today's Sunday. I'm just practicing about, you know, loving people on Sunday. I just call to tell you I love you. I hope things are going well for you. And maybe we could talk later in the week if that would be something for you. But, man, I just appreciate uh, spending time with you in high school or college or yesterday. Or whatever. But you're a good guy, and I just wanted to, I didn't want to take that to bed with me. I wanted to call you and tell you. A call like that, I'll tell you what, getting a call like that for me, I mean, if I received a call like that, it makes me feel good. You know, I've had people call me that I don't really know that we were able to do something to help for. Man, have you walking on clouds? Wow, I did something to help somebody that I didn't even know. To actually take the time and call your friends, call your friends that you haven't been around, uh, that that's a therapy. It's going to be therapy for you, and it's going to be therapy for them. And if you haven't talked to them in a while, you don't know how they're doing. You know, does that make Does that make sense? Wally? One of the things I would like to mention to everyone is that we are the Veteran Suicide Prevention Channel, and that's one of our approaches. I thought about this long and hard when I was coming up. What do you do at 10:30, 11 o'clock, one in the morning, when you're up and things on your mind, can't sleep, you're anxious, you're you know feeling depression, you know you're feeling all of these things. Who do you call besides maybe talk to someone at a suicide? line and we have a lot of veterans that will not even admit when they're having problems mm -hmm, they keep mm -hmm. it to themselves because of the training and things they go to so that's why we created uh, the veterans art and wellness network.org mm. it's a 24-hour channel on that channel it exposes veterans to a lot of uh, to a lot of veterans performing there's comedy there there's therapies there that you can actually take you can take Tai Chi, you can take mindfulness, you can take meditation, and um, and and you can and you can just be entertained and feel like you're with a group of other people who you may have served with who are watching the same channel. It's kind of Amazing. military veteran oriented Amazing. entertainment. Mm -hmm. So Amazing. it's the Veteran Arts and Wellness Network dot org. 
Uh, I hope that uh, you will go see it. By the way, it's not just for veterans. I mean, anyone can go there and, and get something uh, from it. And it's 24 hours a day. It's seven days a week. Get, also, get that address again, Glenn. I, I hate to demonstrate my lack of memory here, but I have to. Veterans. Okay. It's the Veterans Art and Wellness Network dot org. And it's also on Roku. If you have Roku television, just uh, put in Veterans Arts and Wellness Network, and it'll pop up, and you can watch it on your television. And you don't have to be a vet. That's cool. You don't have to be a vet. We we made it where it's made to really help a lot of veterans, but we believe that this channel can help anyone hey, it's, who is experiencing depression, anxiety, and maybe thinking about killing them. Hey, just like I said, when we were at San Jose State and – Taking black studies, my stand was that black studies ain't just for black folk. No. <laughs> uh, Jonathan, we're about to get out of here. Give us a, you, you got your last 30 seconds here. Tell us something. Yeah, no, I, I really appreciate that the focus uh, that Glenn is doing with our veterans community. But I also want to let you guys know that Cornell West will be coming down to the University of Redland. And that information is going to be coming out. And I want to make sure that individuals understand that mental health is going to be the focus of that conversation. And we are really trying to make a push, especially for our, our folks, uh, African-American folks, to really consider this topic to be one of the high priorities in everything that we do and in every conversation. Cornell West, April 20th, University of Redlands, right here in the Inland Empire. Jonathan, do you have a number for how they can get uh, tickets for that because there are tickets. I'll tell you what, we'll be talking about it next week and a week after that, April 20th. You have uh, you don't want to miss the opportunity to hear that brilliant mind clicking. Uh, Cornell West is not playing. So Yes, sir. Uh, all right, we're in good shape. Any other activities, events that we need to be uh, concerned about? <clears throat> Your meeting. Not right now, but there were a number of wellness activities for our ladies that happened on Saturday. I hope you caught one. Uh, one was the wind event. And one was the Queens event. And we are going to continue to do that. But we need to also focus on our mail. So I will give, bring that information to you guys next time I'm here. To make sure that everyone is plugged in. Perfect. Anthony, you say you had a event? Palm Springs? Well, let's see here. Uh, Jim Palmer's place. He's starting jazz night tonight. Jazz night tonight, where? The actress, I don't oh, man, I, that's good. I love my brother. He's got, he, you know why I love Anthony? Because his memory's worse than mine. You know? <laughs> well, I did it on purpose. He, good. <laughs> he, did, he, doesn't, he said he did it on purpose to make me look good. I love this guy. But there's a jazz pl- movement tonight. That's on, in, on Southeast Street by Jose's, Crossing Jose's, from the old Chuck E. Cheese. Is a, he has a building there. With myself, Ronnie B. Good, and Tom. Southeast Street, south of Orange. No, that's no, it's north of Orange. North of Orange. Between, uh... Okay, here's my phone number, 909-915-7922. If you want to know about this jazz thing, call me personally. I will have choked Anthony enough to get the answer by the time it's script. I don't mean choke, choke. I mean, you know, choke, choke. This is Empire Talks Back. I love you guys. I really appreciate that you yeah, decided to spend fun. your time with us today. Um, we spent all this time talking about mental health, and I guess I spent the last 30 seconds letting you know how crazy I am. I don't know. <laughs> pray for me. That's all I can say. And I'll pray for you. You pray for me. I'll pray for you. We'll see you guys next week under two circumstances. One, the good Lord's willing. Two, if the creek don't rise. God bless you. Love you. See you then. KCAA Loma Linda. Loma Linda.